Hi there, welcome to the full review of the Amazon Basic Fire TV. If you want to know what came inside the box, about the ports, the specs and design, I highly recommend you see my unboxing and initial impressions video. You can click the card up here. I'll also leave the link for that video in the description. So I've got a lot of questions from you guys about this TV. I'll try to answer the most frequently asked ones and then I'll share my 20 days of user experience. I'll tell you what I liked. I'll tell you what I think could have been better. And accordingly, you can decide if you should buy this TV or not. So if this is your first time here, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so you never miss an update. Also follow me on my social media handles for more tech info. This is your friend texting. Let's get started. So we'll start with the most frequently asked questions. First, does this Amazon Basic TV come with HDMI ARC support? Yes, I forgot to mention it in my first video and I'm guessing that's why this was asked repeatedly. This TV does come with ARC support. You can go to the display and sound settings and right down here you'll see the HDMI CEC option. Click on it and inside you'll find ARC on off toggle button. Second, does this TV have a VA panel or an IPS panel? The unit I've received, the 43 inch 4K has an IPS panel. But just to tell you, I can't confirm if it's the same for all other sizes. Third, what is the peak brightness of this TV? So it has a peak brightness of 313 nits. Fourth, does this TV come with MEMC or motion smoothening? No, this TV doesn't come with motion smoothening or MEMC technology. Fifth, and probably the most asked one, can we sideload apps on the Fire TV OS? Yes. You can install any Android compatible APK from your pen drive. Super simple. So let's start with the most important part of a TV, the display. The Amazon Basic TV that I have has a 4K IPS panel. Now IPS panels are flawless when it comes to viewing angles. And this one doesn't disappoint. From any angle, the viewing experience is going to be just perfect. No shift in color, no grading at all. The color reproduction is also impressive. Not oversaturated, but tipping more on the natural side. But then again, when I say natural, it doesn't mean flat. It's vivid where it has to be and real at the same time. The blacks are decent, not as deep as we see on a VA panel, but still good enough. The images are crisp and clear. The TV has a peak brightness of 330 nits, which is good enough for this TV. It supports Dolby Vision and you can see the logo on the Disney Hotstar app towards the left. Now Dolby Vision is a mixed bag. We are playing Mandalorian which is extremely dark and dull. I can say it's almost unwatchable. But then here is Mulan again from Disney Hotstar. This is also a Dolby Vision file and this looks absolutely amazing. Check it out yourself. The viewing experience is poles apart so it's kind of confusing. Some Dolby Vision content can be just very unsatisfying while something like this can be a visual treat. Also watched a lot of content from set-up boxes and it did a really good job. Here are SD channels and you can see it's upscaling very well. Considering many channels are still airing in standard definition, you're still going to enjoy it on the Amazon Basic TV. HD channels are gonna look crisp and sharp. It really shines on the 4K panel. Couldn't be better. I also watched a lot of action scenes and it didn't feel laggy or jerky. The TV supports a refresh rate of 60Hz and played videos smoothly, including the ones that you play from your pen drive. Played a lot of 4K videos and it didn't have any problem. The best part is all the formats that I tested worked. The TV also comes with Dolby Atmos support. So if you have Dolby Atmos supported soundbar or home theater system, you can enjoy its full potential. Sadly, there isn't much to talk about the 20 watt speakers. The sound is mostly flat. It lacks the richness. I would highly recommend you invest in a soundbar if you're considering getting this TV. Again, the sound isn't bad. It will suffice for most regular use. But if you really want to enjoy a high definition movie, I believe good sound quality is equally important. Coming to the OS. So if you've seen my videos, you know I'm personally a huge fan of the Fire TV OS. It's the best optimized TV OS. App tiles, content tiles, and input sources, all aligned so well. The OS simply flows with just 1.5 GB of RAM. 
if someone is using this for the first time, it's still super easy. It has all the apps you need and tons more. Netflix, Prime Videos, Disney Hotstar, YouTube. I can safely say it has almost all the apps that an Android TV Play Store would have. In fact, even more, like the Apple TV app, which you can't find on most Android TVs. Tested Netflix, Prime Videos, YouTube, Hotstar, Sony Live, and they all work without any hiccups. In fact, better and faster than most Android TVs. If you're a Prime Videos fan, then there's nothing better than the Fire TV OS. Trust me, after all, it's their own. There is also a huge collection of games that you can download. I downloaded the Asphalt 8. Check this out. No drop frames or lag. It's a delight. The best part is you can play most of the games with a remote, while some will still need a gamepad. But currently, I'm playing Asphalt 8 just using the TV remote. It supports dual band Wi-Fi and it connected just fine on both bands. It comes with Bluetooth 5.0, so connecting your favorite pair of wireless headphones with ease. I tested it a couple of times and there was no delay in audio. You can mirror your Android phone as well, but the experience wasn't really that smooth. Unless you're just showing a picture or a web page on the screen, it's fine. But if you're mirroring a video, it's gonna be a little disappointing. It comes with built-in Alexa voice what control, so you can mic? press the mic button on the remote and ask it to launch your apps, play songs, or even control any of your Alexa controlled smart devices. If you want to mirror your iPhone, all you need to do is download the Air Screen app from the app section, open it, take your iPhone, go to the control center, click on screen mirroring and you should see your TV's name. Click. It's a little laggy, but it works. Just make sure that the TV and phone are on the same Wi-Fi network. All right. If I had to nitpick the cons, no Chromecast built-in, which many might not need, but I truly missed. Then there's no 3.5 headphone jack, which I don't need, but I'm sure many might. Now there is always Bluetooth and optical audio if you want to connect it to external speakers. And finally, only 8 GB internal storage. Come on, man, it's 2021. We need more space. In fact, more the better. Now these aren't deal breakers, but still worth mentioning. All right, final thoughts. So the viewing experience is genuinely very good. Dolby Vision is a mixed bag. Sound is not its strongest point, but the OS, the user experience, the design, and especially the build quality, all were simply amazing. Sound I think is still okay. Maybe I'm expecting too much. Alternatively, you can get an external soundbar, which would even be perfect. If you can skip the Android TV OS and want something smoother and fun, you should definitely consider the Amazon Basic Fire TV Edition. Now this 43 inch 4K variant is available for 28,999 on Amazon.in. Of course, Amazon Basic TV has to be on Amazon. I'll leave the links below in the description. You should definitely check it out. So I hope this video was helpful. If there are any questions, feedback or complaints, mention it down in the comments. All are welcome. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Until next time, cheers.